Hi there, this is uh, Eugene Blanchard, and this is how to invert a hydraulic bottle jack. This is theory on what works and what didn't work based on the internet how-tos. So I watched about 20 or 30 videos on YouTube, and in all honesty, none of them were quite correct. So let's go and see uh, how to do it. All right, let's take a look at how the uh, hydraulic jack works. This will give you a good idea what we have to do to make it work upside down. What we have here is we have a reservoir. It's a crude, draw, it's a very simple drawing. Uh, we have a reservoir, it's in blue, it's showing our oil levels. Uh, we have our cylinder. The cylinder actually goes above the reservoir, but it didn't show it. We have a series of, uh, we have our pump over on this side here. Uh, we have a valve here another valve. There's just ball bearings and then we have our bleed valve here. So this is our release. So we, when we want to release pressure it comes back this way. The very first step would be to sort of charge the pump. We'll get a stroke. We're going to lift the pump up and when we lift up what we end up doing is creating a vacuum here which lifts up this ball which then allows our oil to come in to, to fill the pump. Uh, at the same time, we have a vacuum here, and the vacuum, as in the direction of the red arrows, pulls down on this valve here, which stops any fluid from coming in the cylinder chamber from coming in. So the only fluid that comes in is from our reservoir, fills up this one. This valve blocks anything from coming in here. Now when we uh, press down on the pump, what happens, we get pressure here. The pressure pushes this ball bearing and seals this so we have no oil coming from here back into the uh, reservoir. So that makes our one-way valve here. At the same time, we got pressure that comes down through this passage and it comes up and it pushes this valve up and then it allows oil to go into our cylinder area here so it can push on the cylinder. It can pressurize our cylinder. Now, when we want to release pressure, we've got pressure in here. What happens is that we unscrew this and uh, we have a little valve here, a little ball bearing and it allows the higher pressured oil fluid to come through here and go back into the reservoir. Um, and this is at the bottom of the reservoir. There, there's no need for a valve here. We have a mechanical valve. Now these valves, the default position of check valves are closed. So these are uh, check valves. What happens is gravity holds them in position. There's no springs or anything like that. It's very simple. It's just going to be a little a cavity here and a little uh, uh, retainer on top and it's just gravity that holds these valves down. Now when we turn it upside down, one of the things we see is that our reservoir of oil is here and we have air. So the very first problem is that we have air at the top of the reservoir. The solution is that what we want is this to have a pipe to go down into the oil. So we're going to add a little pipe or tube into here. So that way when the, the pump on the intake, what will happen is it will start sucking fluid into here as opposed to air. The second problem is air also. So what happens is that it's very difficult to bleed the system. And part of the problem is that we have air on this side. If we open up our release valve here, what we'll find out is that we have air in here. If we're trying to bleed the system, we're stuck with air coming in this way. The solution is to add a pipe to, or tube. This side goes down into the, the uh, bottom of the reservoir also. So that way if we go, we have a tube on this side, we have a tube on this side, we have fluid all the way through there and we bypass the air. This is what it looks like. What we see is that put a fitting in here, put a fitting in here. I just sort of 3D printed something and just had it up just to the bottom of the threads. Basically put a tie wrap on it to hold it in place. I put a little bit of uh, Permatex gasket on here just to seal it. One of the problems is, is gravity is forcing the ball valves open. The ball valves sort of standard position should be closed, but gravity is, is forcing these open. So we've sort of addressed the problem with air and, and getting the tubes. And that's what about 90% oh, of the uh, YouTube videos out there talk about, oh, you just need to add tubes. But well, we have a problem with the one-way valves, the check valves, is gravity is going to force these open. The solution is what we have to do is move the position of the valve from this side to this side for the on the pump side. We have to do the same thing on the cylinder side is this valve has to be moved over on this side. So now what gravity will keep this valve this closed and gravity will keep this one closed. So we need new valve positions and they're not as difficult as I originally thought. It takes a little just a little bit of thinking of how deep to uh, drill some holes in that. So now what we find is if we go to the uh, filling the pump cycle, when we pull the pump down, we're going to be filling this. 
this valve is going to lift up and we're going to get fluid coming in. Remember we have a, a tube that goes down here and fluid will come in this way. When we pull the pump down, we're going to have a vacuum and it's going to pull this ball bearing valve down and seal it. New valve position when we're pumping out fluid, we start pushing this way. When we push, we have a pressure. The pressure comes through here and it seals the reservoir side. It pushes down on this ball bearing and seals it. At the same time, it pushes this up, allows clearance so that we can get our oil into the uh, cylinder. How do you do this? Well, if you look at the uh, uh, the inside of your uh, hydraulic bottle jack, what you'll find out is that the original ball bearing positions, one was here, and this was just a little clip that went over top to hold it in place, and on the pump side there's a ball bearing in here, and when you screwed in the top of the pump there's usually a washer, and the washer would hold it in there loosely. Over here, this is the reservoir side for the cylinder, and over here is the pump side for the reservoir I believe it is. So we have to drill through these holes. And it's actually pretty straightforward. You just drill all the way through. You find out what size of the existing holes and just drill straight through. And then looking at the bottom, what we're going to do is drill and tap these holes to a common tap size that will loosely fit the ball bearings. Right? So my ball bearings were just under a quarter inch. So uh, I believe it was a 5 16th tap would then allow it to a ball bearing to fit through and then I could tap it to 5 16th threads. Uh, I've got some more information later on in this. How deep do you go? Well if you look on the side of the pump, usually on the side of the pump it'll tell you that have been drilled previously. For this one here, this hole here, I drilled it this far just to this depth and that was the tap size. And I did the same thing on this one. I drilled it to here. When you tap it, you don't tap it all the way. Oh, something else is that when you drill, this is a cast iron, you drill it at a very high speed, I think like a thousand RPM or two thousand RPM. There, there's a chart, you can look it up. And I looked it up and it left a very nice finish. Uh, the one thing you have to do is when you tap, you should use a bottom tap. Bottom tap is flat, so that way you don't damage the, the ball bearing seat on here. So you tap this, and what I found from here to here, it would be leave 0.1 inch plus the ball bearing diameter from here to here. This is 0.1 inch plus the ball bearing diameter. Just You just need 0.1 inch play on the ball bearing. And I did the same thing here. Right, so I drilled all the way to the sort of the top here, but I only tapped to here. Uh, I made screw plugs the same length as shown. So whatever length this was, I made a screw plug and the same as here. And that way it will hold the ball bearing in position that it only has a, a little bit of movement, just enough to, to act like a, a check valve and to pass uh, the hydraulic fluid. Then what I did is I cut the bolts to length. I, so I got some bolts and I cut them to length and to create the threaded plugs and I used Teflon to seal. This is from my bottle jack. This will be different from yours. I sort of drew it in a, a CAD package just to get my head around this would be the horizontal, the green here would be the horizontal hole or drill or pipe that's in it. And what I did is I, I went from the uh, pump side and I drilled all the way straight through and then I came back from the bottom. My pilot hole was 22, number 22 for this one, just to find out where the location was. And then my tap drill was a 5 16th, that's 24. Uh, so it would take a, a 0 0.272 or an eye, eye drill and I drilled it 0.475 deep and then I only tapped it to uh, 0.1 and then I uh, had it so I had a little tiny plug that fit in here. Did a similar thing on the other side. Hope that's not too confusing. One of the things I came across was uh, people were talking about blocking the vent hole in the cylinder. right? So I did that and I ran into all sorts of problems. So don't block the vent hole and we'll talk about why. So I've redrawn this uh, correctly. Here's the cylinder. There's a seal here, a seal here seal here and a seal here and a seal here. So this seal is to stop the fluid from leaking out to the outside world. It's also to stop dirt and stuff to come in. This one is the seal that has the pressure. It was attached to my cylinder. So this side will get pressurized. And then you have a little vent hole that goes in this space to here. You'll, you'll probably have some oil and some air in here. It's a fixed seal on the cylinder. So as you pressurize this, the seal is going to move up and it's going to pressurize this area here. And the whole purpose behind that vent hole is to release the pressure into here. Naturally, I heard this on the internet and uh, you know, you got to plug the hole. So if it's on the internet, you know it's got to be true. So I plugged the hole. And what I found is that as I pumped into here, I'd get a lot of farting noises and all sorts of stuff and problems. You'd actually pressurize this and now you have this pressurized area 
fighting this one. The basis of this is don't plug the hole, right? You plug the hole, you're gonna have problems. What you need is a way to release the pressure in here back into the reservoir. Another one I came across was to, uh, people were adding an external reservoir to the cylinder. I tried that. This is um, a little reservoir from an uh, overflow reservoir from a Honda or Toyota or something like that. And I hooked it up and it didn't work. You don't need it. It's not serving any purpose except to fill the whole thing up with fluid and then you run into more problems. You need a little bit of air in there to allow compression. And so how do you bleed a hydraulic bottle jack? Well, you loosen the release valve two turns like you would do to release, lower the cylinder or whatever. Then what you do is you pump it 20 times. Uh, then you tighten the release valve and then you pump the handle until maximum height. And you might do this three or four times, go through this procedure. Now, what is this doing? We've opened up the release valve here. So when you pump, the uh, pressure comes in here, goes into the cylinder. And then what happens is the cylinder pressure comes out and goes back into the reservoir. So if there's any air that's in the cylinder, it will get pumped out and back into the reservoir. So you have a, a nice path that goes all the way through here. You have to do it 20 times, bleed out any of the air through the system and back in here. So I hope this helps with your project. There's a lot of misinformation on the internet and I hope this clears up exactly what you have to do to get a, a bottle jack inverted. Thank you.